Okay, so in the last video, we went through the steps on how to configure a Unify cloud controller on Ubuntu 16.04. And now it's fresh, it's running, but it's not really that exciting because we really don't have any devices set up for it. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is before we add any devices is to configure our site settings. And so if you look in the lower left, there is a button called settings that brings us to our site settings. Imagine that. So looking at this in the upper right, we can see I can add a site if I need to. So I can have multiple locations known as sites on this platform. And uh, you can take a look at this section of options all relate to what site I'm at now, which says default. And then we have the other options down here which are more controller-wide settings. Uh, so we're going to be within the site itself. And so the first thing that I always do is give my site a name. I'm just going to call this church since it's for that church network. And then apply these changes. And let's jump into the network because the last thing I want to do is provision another 192.168.1.1 network. That's, that's terrible you'll have a collision if you're growing your network and you also need to make sure that you have enough usable IP addresses. So with a 192.168.1.1 network, it theoretically will work just fine for this, this size of a network that they're looking for, at least for uh, their office side. They're not going to have more than 254 devices all connected at once on their office side, but in case that we do some sort of VPNing in the future, I'm going to change this to 192.168.57. And I always like to just move this. I don't want it to be at a dot one. This is for the USG's IP. I'm going to move this to dot 254. And right away, it says update DHCP range, which if I had this gateway IP and this DHCP range, obviously we'd have a problem. So if I press update, you can see that it updates this. And looking at this, uh, I have 254 usable addresses, which is good. I want to change this. Let's just call this church.local. This is going to be their local domain name. And the other thing I want to look at here is notice that my gateway IP is within my DHCP range. I always like to just kind of bump this down just in case there's other network devices and just because I want some other kind of breathing room within uh, this network, especially on the DHCP side, let's bump up anything dynamic to from 50 to 250. So it'll give us about, about 200 usable uh, addresses in the dynamic range. So that's good. Now the bread and butter to this whole process is down right here. This is called the DHCP Unify Controller, and this is an actual DHCP option. I believe technically it's DHCP option number 43. If we set this, if I copy my controller's IP address and paste that in there, any device that is added will be told that, hey, if you're looking for the Unify Controller, this is where it's located. So if I plug in a Windows machine, it's not really gonna care but any other unified device, remember we have the USG, we have the switch, and then we're, we're going to have a number of access points. Anytime that you plug in a device for the first time, it's going to default to DHCP. So the USG is going to assign it an, an IP somewhere between this range and say, oh, also, by the way, please join or at least let this controller know that you're ready to be adopted. And we're going to see the magic of that pretty soon. So make sure you set your, your Unify controller there and make sure that's an IP address. It has to be a static IP address. It will not support a domain name. You can run a, a custom domain up here, like you could call it like unify.mydomain.com. That's fine, but in that section, it has to be an IP address. Cool, now that I have my network configured, I'm now ready to add the USG to this site. So let's show you how to do that. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is unbox your USG router. And we want to connect that to your cable modem or DSL, whatever you're using. And from that point, 
will need to connect your computer into the LAN port. So internet goes to WAN for wide area network and your computer goes to LAN for local area network. From this point, you want to plug in your USG. And while it's initializing, it's going to kind of do these flashes on and off again. Give it about a minute or two, eventually it will go solid white. Now the device is ready for us to do our configuration to join it to our cloud controller. Okay, great. So looking at my network settings on my Mac, we can see that I have an IP address of 192.168.1.6. That's assigned by the USG, which is also letting me know that it's located at 1.1. So the first thing I need to do is let's set a static IP address. So if I go up here, drop down to manually, I can set an IP address on that same network. Let's just do 192.168.1.15. It's going to be on the same subnet and the router is going to be the same as well. So just press apply. But let's test this connection as well. So if I go into my controller here, I need to just go up, press refresh, and great. So I've confirmed that any device that I plug in should have access to my controller that's hosted in the cloud. So our next step is to tell our USG to inform our cloud controller that it's ready to be adopted. So open up a tab and go to 192.168.1.1. And once you land on this page, it's going to say that your connection's not secure. It's using a self-signed certificate. So just go through your browser, uh, confirm the exception or proceed. And now we're finally to the USG's page itself. But what we'll need to do is move into the configuration and look down at this inform URL. The inform URL is telling the device on which controller should be informed. So you can see that there's HTTP colon slash slash unify colon 8080 slash inform. We basically want to follow this template, but we want to put in our own IP address here. So I'm just going to paste in my values just to make it easy, but you can see that's the IP address of my controller and it's going to do the 8080 slash inform of where this device is going to let that controller know it's ready to be adopted. So let's save these changes. And now I have a very important message here. So it says the adoption request was sent. Please adopt the gateway once adopted, come back here and hit the confirm button. I'm not exactly sure why it does this, why it requires two clicks, but I know whenever you're doing a cloud controller adoption with a USG, it requires you to send it once. It's, it basically just sent it now. And then once we press confirm, after the cloud controller is in adopting mode, it sends it again. And that's where the controller will finally be able to grab this device. So let me show you how this exactly looks like. If we go to our controller, we'll see that I have a device here that is pending adoption. I need to just come over here, click on adopt, go back to my gateway, and press confirm. Now if I go back, oh, before we do that, it, we can see the notification here. It says, okay, uh, the URL's been set, which is good. And if we switch back here, we can now see that it's adopting. And shortly after, it should switch over to provisioning. There it goes. So now what this means is it's actually sending the settings from the controller down to my USG device. So the one thing to remember while you're provisioning your new gateway is you need to remember that I'm also changing the network on this as well. So we'll get stuck here where it says provisioning. But if I look at my Unify device, it has a solid blue light. And that means that it's been provisioned and it's connected to my controller. And you can see if I try to refresh this, uh, I get uh, cannot connect. And that's because it's stuck on my actual adapter here. We have a statically set IP address. So we can switch this to DHCP, press apply. And when it comes back, it should have that 192.168.57 network. And you can see right here. And here's the church.local. So we can go into our controller, and I should be able to refresh this. Great, so now I have internet access. We can see that we have a USG that is connected, uh, and you can see the status right here. But now that we have at least one device connected now with the USG, it's a lot easier to add other unified devices. So I'll show you how that's done. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my laptop and plug it into my Unify switch. Then I'm going to run my switch into my USG. And we're just going to wait for that to power on for a minute here. And we're going to wait until we have a white light on the switch itself. Once we have that solid white light on the switch, we can jump back to our controller and see right away that we have a new device that's pending adoption. So now since we configured that DHCP server on the USG to point our devices to our controller, the only thing that I'll need to do is click on Adopt, and it will start to send all these network settings to my Unify switch. So now I see a solid blue light on my Unify switch, and the status did just update to provisioning. So this is where the actual process of the controller sending the settings to the switch itself are being processed and we should have this to come back online very shortly. It will go through a reboot process but once it comes back online it should join our controller and say that it's connected. Cool so now I have my switch connected and that's literally how easy it is to add another device to our Unify site because the USG is taking care of provisioning the location of where the controller is located to everything else. So if we want to add a wireless network now, all I need to do is just go down to settings here, go into my wireless networks, create a new wireless network. Let's just call this server side up and we'll give it a, a password and press save. And then the only thing that we have to do now is connect our Unify access point to our switch itself. Now if you don't have a Unify switch you'll probably have to use your power over Ethernet adapter but in my Unify switch it does support power over Ethernet so I can just plug an Ethernet cable directly into any port and it will power on. Once it's done powering on you'll notice that there's a solid white light on the Unify access point itself and that's when we know that the device is ready to be adopted. So looking in the controller, we can see that we have a device that's pending adoption. The only thing I need to do is click on adopt. Same process as our switch. It will go through sending the settings to the access point itself. Once we get that blue solid light, it's provisioning and it should come back online after a short reboot and we'll be able to see our wireless network. Okay, so now I have a solid blue light on my Unify access point. Looking at my controller, it says that I have an access point right here that's connected, which is good. And if we switch to my network settings, we can see right here my server side up network. And if I put in my super secret password, I pop that in there and look at that. I'm connected to the 57.53 you can see I have another adapter that's connected. Let me unplug that. And now I should be able to open up a tab, go to serverside.up.net, and everything should load. So perfect, you now know how to build your own network from the ground up using Ubiquiti's Unify products. We're just getting started. I'm going to be moving further into uh, advanced VLANs, setting up guest wireless network, throttling that guest wireless network and making sure that it's protected from the other one as well. So if you are interested in that, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up down below. If you have a question, feel free to drop one in the comments or hit us up on Twitter at ServerSideUp or you can always follow me personally at JD Rogers. So thanks again. Look forward to see you next time.